Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. So today's Pick a Card reading in honour I just of purchasing the medicine, the medicine Woman Oracle from Rockpool Publishing that came out recently. I wanted to do a very spiritually and healing based reading. So the focus of this reading is on what ancient healing power is both arising in you for others and coming towards you for your own healing. So that's we'll be looking at both of these things. Uh, and how they connect to your life path, what supports you have, the sort of recipe of it, and the sort of outcome of these sort of healing journeys. So they could. I'm not getting into medicine in the sense of sort of science medicine and, and diagnostics on that level. This is very much a spiritual reading. I'm not a doctor. So I'll be working very much with the energies that these cards can elucidate for the sort of spiritual healing energies we're talking about. So, as always, the important thing is to go to the right reading. You may want to go to more than one, and that's perfectly fine. If you feel drawn to more than one, there may be a number of mystical and ancient healing energies arising in you or coming to your aid. So, you do you on that. But to help with it, I shuffled and asked Spirit for one of three. There are two other cards from this deck in each of the readings to start the reading off. But an idea of one of the energies in terms of healing around you. So for pile number one, we have Spirit of Fire that talks about shining your power unreservedly. For pile number two, we have the Path of Beauty, walking the Path of Beauty and elevating your feminine soul. You don't have to be a woman or identify with a woman for that. It's just about the divine feminine. And pile three, self-knowledge, dive into your depths where your truth resides. So a very deep kind of internal analysis I think and self-knowledge as I say so one of those energies or more than one may draw to you and help you choose the reading otherwise just go with whatever other way you feel intuitively drawn to a reading or readings when you know what reading or readings you want as always the timestamps are in the description box below and I'll see you there welcome pole one to your reading so you came to the reading with the spirit of fire, which, as I said in the introduction, says shine your power unreservedly. This is very much like the wands in the tarot. It's, it's the sense of creativity, desire, passion, energy, activity, all of those things, what the fire element means to you, both spiritually and also in life. Certainly would be suggesting for you that if there's healing energy that you are needing to bring to yourself, it is to revive your sense of passion. This card talks about... You know, if you if you are if you've been disappointed in in connections and you might have or relationships, it's time to rekindle passion. You know, be open to that being in your life, drawing that sort of energy in and focusing on what really makes you feel most alive. So, for you, I think this is both a healing coming to you so that you open that up, but I also think it's part of a inspirational energy you bring to others. So what we have here is I have here the energy coming to you, the healing coming to you, and here the energy and healing that you bring to others. Now what's really interesting about this part one is that in the healing coming to you, I think there is a relationship or set of relationships or a community or a soul family, something that has to do with connectivity. These two put together suggest that you have felt either disappointed in love or disappointed in finding your soul tribe or your community or something like that. So the medicine that is coming to you are the right connections and the capacity to to let go of what hasn't worked and bring in what will work. So I think there's a very strong energy of people coming into your life or opportunities to, to be connected to people. And what that is awakening for you on a mystical level is how you can be vulnerable again. I do think that most people who've come to this reading, at the very least, there are key communities, groups or friendship circles to, to reconnect with or to connect with that are more true to who you are or it could be a great love. That, that is definitely a possibility with this, and we'll see what comes out with tarot. But in either case, it feels as though you've been burnt, literally, in some form of connection, but the healing coming to you is to find those that you can be vulnerable with, those that you can connect to, those that you can be true of who you are. And the interesting thing is in taking this on, Pile One, and being open to that vulnerability, you actually operate almost as a, a sentinel to others to show how to purify energy and move towards what is more true. You create in them literally the phoenix rising. I find it very interesting. There's so much fire in this. 
so much fire in this. You may be a fire sign or have fire strongly in your chart. But in any case, I feel like that energy is coming through for you to bring those that are right for you to you and then to show other people how to rise up from and purify things that haven't worked. So I think you, you stand as an inspiration. In fact, I think for some of you, if this isn't a great love coming in, then it may be that you, you find your tribe and you become a bit of a spiritual leader within this group, that you help others. You, you almost find a dispossessed group maybe and together you are able to connect and feel vulnerable with each other, which revives others. The one little piece of warning though in this for you with the purification is that this is very beautiful, finding your people, helping them rise, but this is almost like the, the ultimate empath. There is a possibility that you could be picking up the energies around you and you need to be able to purify and keep your own boundaries. So I think whatever is going to go on in you reawakening your passion and having that healing to be truer to yourself and more connected to others may bring some people to you that are harder work than others. Not that they're necessarily wrong because I do think you are meant to help people rise I think that's something that is, is part of your life purpose and mission. But in doing it, in fact, you may have had this happen before. You may very well be the sort of person who is very inspirational, very positive for the most part, but you get burnt out by energy being drawn out of you and then you feel disconnected. So this may be also a lesson for you about how to best use your passion and your connectivity to others, to be vulnerable in the sense of being able to be connected, but not vulnerable in terms of boundaries, because it's almost like your rocket fuel for other people. If you don't have the boundaries, they, the, the flame that the phoenix uses to rise is almost at your expense. I don't think necessarily that people mean to do harm, but it's, it is an issue for you. So I think the big sort of ancient healing power for you now is understanding how to use your own vitality and your own optimism and your own passion and your own creativity in a way that does connect you in a true and real way with others, but which doesn't deplete you as well. So let's see what Tarot has to say. We're going to look firstly at what healing is, is coming to you or available to you. So a little bit more about this. Then we're going to look at more about what it is that you are providing to others. Then we're going to see how it all relates to your soul path. So firstly, a little bit more information for Pile 1 Spirit about the healing that is available to them in rekindling their passion for connectivity, authentic, true, deep, passionate connectivity with others. Seven of Swords, Knight of Cups reversed, Knight of Pentacles reversed, Eight of Pentacles reversed, Five of Cups reverse. Okay, this is definitely saying this healing is around something that disappointed you. I think for many of you, it may have been a love relationship with the Knight of Cups reverse. Doesn't have to have been, but it was something close to your heart. The thing about you, Pile One, is that you are so passionate and so creative that when you connect, you connect from the heart, the heart and the soul and the and the sort of the, the sacral chakra as well. It's like it's very, very powerful for you. But I feel as though you found that that not everybody else is as authentic as you. And this is what you're needing to heal from, the disappointment of that and the disappointment of things that, that were not uh, committed, not true, not loyal to you. There's something here, as I say. And I really feel like with so many of these reverse cards that like knowingly or unknowingly, people drained you like a battery and like you were like you were the rocket fuel, as I say, for them. But it's there's there has been some duplicity I think around you or people that were not true or not committed whether it's lovers or friends or whatever there you are healing from that the healing that is available to you is to unlearn those patterns and let go of that emotional energy because new energy is trying to come through and a capacity to be vulnerable is coming through but you have to heal from the disappointment so that you're going to allow yourself to be vulnerable again now what that tells me pile one is that good energy is coming in but it's saying it's almost blocked at this point in time because of this disappointment. So getting back in touch with that helps draw that in. But this tells me that maybe some of what happened before was just that, that people saw you as an energy source or a creative source or an inspirational source or something like that. But they weren't really dedicated to the true you. This is to bring in the people who are dedicated to the true you. 
So let's see what healing, therefore, then you then offer to others. When you bring in the right people and you've got the boundaries right and you're going to actually help other people heal and really shine and really soar, what, tell us a little bit more, Spirit for Pile 1, about what healing they bring to others. Nine of Pentacles, the Moon reversed, the Star reversed, Ten of Swords reversed, Queen of Cups reversed. Okay, whatever you've been through... And I do think, you know, whether it's love or friendships or social groups or whatever it was where something didn't last and something wasn't honest, you're going to help other people see and liberate from the same thing. I mean, some of you may literally you know, get a passion for and study and learn some form of therapy and actually bring that out to help other people. Some of you may be coaches and mentors. There's very much an energy like that potentially, and it's a good way to use this energy because coaches and mentors, coaches kind of take people through a kind of almost dialectic conversation to get them to come to their own conclusions so that you, you aren't drawn on too much. And mentors talk about experience that they've had so that people can then make their own decisions. Both of those things are a good way of having boundaries for yourself. But whatever way this works, you're helping people be more independent. Even while I think there's connection to stand in their independence and to be able to bring up to the surface the things that have affected their self-esteem, the things that have put their own light out. You've had your light put out. It's getting rekindled. You're going to show other people how to rekindle it, how the worst is over and how that those things that were not emotionally resonant should be let go of, just just be gone because people are meant to, to become the phoenix. The star is meant to turn around. So there's something in what you've been through that you're going to then be able to sort of model or help other people see and that's and it's a it is a purification process. It's purifying out this this emotional drama and and lack of of clarity to to bring things to the surface so that people feel more able to stand in their sovereignty, just as you do. This is how it's a better it's a better approach. It's a better way of doing things. So, but there's something that you've learnt, and this is why this is the case. So let's ask what this does. In relation to your life purpose and your soul purpose, pile one. Queen of Swords. Seven of Pentacles reversed. Ten of Wands. Hanged one. Nine of Swords reversed. Okay, takes a lot of worry out of this for you. You've been carrying an enormous load, I have to say. Like, I think there's something about you. Maybe it's the reason that you were drawn to, to this. If you don't normally come to my readings, for instance, I mean, hopefully many of you do, but if this one particularly drew you, I think that you are drawn to healing people, healing others, and I think you have a natural healing ability. But I think that it drained you before. So this is this is how to actually work out how to relieve the burden of all of that. It's, it's, to, take, it's to take the burden out by a different approach and to take the worry out. There's something in the approach that you've done. This is connected to your life path in some way where some approach that you took took you to the wrong people. And this gives you that kind of intellectual aha moment. It also gives you, some of you may study this. You may study healing therapies or whatever so that you can do this. You might study how to do boundaries around it. You might study mentoring, coaching. Any of those things could occur. But your life path is meant to understand this almost in a framework so that you don't get drawn in, so that you have the tools not to have this sort of like lack of return on investment, so that you don't overburden yourself because your aha moment, your different way of looking at things will relieve, relieve the tension of a lot of other people. You are your own example of whatever it is that you could offer to other people to heal. And as I say, that means it's hard one, but on the other hand, things that are hard won are also very hard to lose after that. So I think you're, you're stepping up to a different level and you're able now to, you've learned, you are, you are someone who's very smart. You're able to learn from any, what could have been mistakes in terms of giving too much and just being too much there and therefore being taken advantage of. And, and also learning to be more discriminating about who you actually give your energy to. And I don't mean discrimination in, in any negative terms. I mean it in terms of really working out who, who is best able to, to, benefit from your healing energy and also will have the the honor and the and the, the care for you not to to drain you dry because that's the balance but there's something in that what you've learned from that you're going to help others and it's a very ancient sort of primal energy that you bring through but 
but it, it is like fire. Fire, if if it is not well tended and it doesn't have the right boundaries around it, can burn like wildfire, literally, and then burn itself out. So I think the big healing message for you is about that. So let's see some mystical supports for you in both having the healing yourself and providing the healing to others, part one. So firstly, we'll get something from the White Owl Mystic. This has various different sorts of energies and characters that could help you. So, Maiden. Okay, so this is something, I do think for some of you this is going to bring in love. Something very new, something as fresh as spring. This is this, is this passionate energy. And the maiden is open to experience and experiment and so forth. So I think that there is something about this fire of passion and so forth, this, this fire of inspiration is going to be with you. It's, it's almost as though even though you went through this and you kind of got burnt out, what wasn't burnt out in you was the, the energy of spring, of new growth. It's just got to be rekindled. It's always in you. I mean, you are like an ever-ready battery. It's just that, you know, even ever-ready batteries sometimes run down. <laughs> So then let's see one other from this deck. April Moon. Okay. This is a very similar energy to the Maiden in a way because this is starting out on the new journey. This is the new fire. This is setting new intentions. So it's a bit like waxing crescent moon, you know, or first quarter moon in the sense of the general moon cycles. But the April Moon is a time for for bringing in the new. So this is definitely, it's all saying the same thing. There, there's definitely a healing energy coming to you to connect to the right people. You will inspire others, but it's new. You're not going to recreate whatever it was that burnt you out before. So that's good. It's just that Spirit is saying, do be aware that, you know, you your energy is very powerful and you do need to have the right boundaries. Let's get you a couple of divine animals also to, to help with your healing journey. So one for your healing and one for how you will help others. And I'm sorry if you can hear that noise in the background. I'm not sure if you can, but someone's doing some mowing or something, I think. So we have Wolverine, fierceness. Yeah, you, you, this is to bring courage in and that fiery energy in. Because I think you have been burnt. You have been hurt by something. And as I say, whether it's love or whether it's friendships or whatever it is this is to give you back that fire in the belly wolverine is, and to tell you you're fierce you're ready you're strong you don't have to be worried about this and then in terms of how you help others we have links secrets all right so that's interesting i think this is partly the boundaries i think that there is a secret apart from, there's a few things there's a secret source to what you do that you will help the right people with you will tell them your history. You will show them what happened. There'll be something like that where you share your secrets, you share what you've learned. And that is why they can rise like a phoenix. But you will only do it with the right people. You will have the right boundaries. And it, it feels it feels like mentoring and coaching. It feels like, or being a therapist, it feels like gradually allowing people to come into the secret recipe for how to do this, but you're guiding them to do it rather than doing it for them, rather than giving them your energy, you are helping them learn the secrets to find their energy. But it's not for everybody. You know, you need to, as I say, be a bit discerning about where you put this energy pile one. So to help with that, let's have a look at a direction. Let's get from the Lantern Oracle a direction for your healing, healing for yourself and your healing of others. Transitions. You have all of the inner resources you need to cross whatever bridges arise on your path. So yeah, you do. Because I say, you're sort of like firepower, literally. So have trust in that. But there is a transition. You are moving from one state where you felt depleted and I think used or misunderstood and you're moving to one where you are going to be much more understood and you're going to be able to create energy to help others but in a way that you can manage. This transition is towards your life path, part one. It is there to help you. So let's get you some ingredients. Let's use the Lucky Potion Oracle and we'll look at some ingredients around you. One for, again, how you heal and one for how you help others. So for how you heal... Opulence. Okay, we'll have a look at what you do with opulence. But yeah, maybe enjoying yourself a bit more. Maybe maybe giving yourself the rewards you deserve. There is something very selfless about your energy. But if you get into your passion and you say, I deserve something too, that that's important. And the energy of healing for others, the, the part of the recipe or ingredients of that. We have 
Passion. Yeah, passion. I think you bring passion back for others. But let's roll the dice. So the dice with the with the Lucky Potion Oracle tells us whether these energies are ones that you should drink in just you know, and really imbue, whether they're ones that you should share or whether they're ones that you should spill so that you can then clear the energy. So around opulence, around how this ingredient is part of your healing, share, sharing. Okay, so you are going to do well out of this. I think if any of this comes in your career or anything like that, you will do well, you will make money. Sharing that energy, sharing that gratitude, sharing it with your group, sharing your gifts in many ways, all will help you go towards opulence and it will also help other people. There's a direct connection. This is very much, and if this is around a love relationship, the more you share with your love partner, the, the passion, the desire, the opulence, the, the sort of moving towards that which is the good life, the better. Then here with passion, which is the passion which I think links to the, the phoenix, bringing that passion out in others. Again, share. Okay, it's very much sharing with you. So so this is the passion that you have is shared with others. It does, again, go back to the warning there. Sharing the passion in a way that doesn't deplete yours is important. And I feel like for many of you, there is a very significant relationship coming in, a love relationship or a friendship where the sharing of the opulence is almost like a way of, of putting a boundary in and keeping what you need in your cup full so that then when you share, you don't deplete yourself. And the passion then becomes something that ignites, ignites others and brings them into, into being the phoenix. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to get some stars to guide you with astrology and numerology. And then we're just going to look at some outcomes of this journey for you. So firstly, some stars or numerology to guide you also. Third house. Communication, what you communicate, how you communicate, finding your people, communicating your passion, communicating your boundaries. All of those things are going to be important, pile one. Eight, yeah, it is about work. It's about community. It's about connection. But it's also about opulence. There's something about this for many of you. It will, it will create something in a career or, or making money or a business in some way. It will, it will bring that in. This opulence is very strong. You're going to be rewarded. I think that you gave more than your fair share in the past. And I think this is coming into balance for you, Pile 1. And Chiron, healing. Yeah, well, we were talking about healing, but you're definitely going to have healing coming out of this. And Chiron heals others. So there's something in all of this. You are going to have this healing effect on other people very, very distinctly. And I think for many of you, through something like a career or work in a community or something like that, Okay, so just to finish off, we're just going to get a couple of cards from the Life Soul Vision Oracle. So firstly, honesty at the edge of quiet. This is lovely when this one comes up. It's like, I feel like there's a calming for all of this fire and all this energy in the Phoenix rising. Somewhere within is true authenticity and true connection that doesn't have to overburn itself out. It just burns at exactly the right flame level and no higher. And this also goes back to secrets. You don't have to share this with everybody. And Queen of Fire, but you're going to shine so bright. Fire, very, very strongly for you. Passion self-actualization, the sacred inner flame. That's what's being reignited for this, for you to connect and to be able to feel vulnerable but safe and opulent and to help others similarly fly towards their potential. So I think you've got a really lovely energy, Pile 1, and I think you're going to be incredibly helpful to others. I hope that this is helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. <clears throat> so you came to the reading with Path of Beauty as being the central core of the healing, ancient healing that is, is being awakened in you for you and for others at the moment. Over here, we have the energy of healing coming direct to you with the Wild Feminine and, and Release Fear. And then here we have what you are healing others with, with the Spirit of Water and Home. I've got to say, this is a gorgeous energy. This is gorgeous. Because... 
what this is saying to me, path of beauty, coming back to loving yourself, understanding yourself, it's possible that you have suffered some sort of a loss or something like that or felt that you didn't belong or that you didn't look right or whatever it might be, but you're, you're coming to an understanding of what is beautiful within you and particularly the divine feminine side, but, you know, it also can pick up divine masculine as well. But there is this sense of awakening to your beauty and maybe seeing it for the first time. I think it's very interesting that, you know, we see a butterfly there. And I think I've said this before in reading sometimes, it, it always it always makes me contemplate the concept of how how complete the transition is from a caterpillar to a butterfly, that I wonder whether a caterpillar would think a butterfly was beautiful. And yet and yet that transformation is beautiful. And when we look at it, we see the new, new transformed being as being far more beautiful than its original form. And that's not to put down its original form, but I just think it's an evolution. So I feel here, your healing energy at the moment, the ancient healing that's coming to you is to reconnect you with your beauty and to transform it and to transform you back, in a sense, back to what your ultimate direction was. Because a caterpillar is always meant to become a butterfly. So you're always meant, it's it's like, you know, the, the ugly duckling that was the swan you know and i'm not saying that you were ugly but i'm saying that there is something about true beauty coming up now for you it's lovely and it comes for you in in connecting to the divine feminine or at least to the receptive the wild the creative with the wild feminine here it says awaken the she-wolf instinct the primordial force very deep energy of getting back to your emotional and your sort of divine feminine core here and letting yourself loose being a bit wild, being true to who you are, not what everybody else has told you to be. So again, you know, maybe you were told you had to be a caterpillar, but you're a butterfly. <laughs> like there's that sort of energy here. It's it's becoming your healing is in getting back to that wild truth in that you have and releasing fear, no longer feeling that that is somehow lesser, understanding that is who you are. So there's a very strong transformation towards your truth and your authenticity. And how that then helps others is it opens up this enormous well with the spirit of water of, of you know, purification and care and emotion and acceptance. And it helps people feel home, that they can be at home. So I feel there's something in you, in you being able to release your fears and express who you truly are, that makes other people realize they can do it and find their home. So it's like you you draw to yourself other people who are going through a transformation and who have felt a little bit left of centre, so to speak, and you you let them get back in touch with their emotions and feel at home because you are so at home in yourself and in your own beauty, and so you bring out beauty in others. It's a really gorgeous energy, I have to say, Paul, too. It's very emotional and psychological rather than physical healing it's very much about the truth and authenticity authenticity and who we would be at home there's a very strong sense here of like the fourth house in your astrology chart and the fourth house of the astrology charts of other people what makes them feel at home what makes them feel real and you are like taking the inhibitions and, and throwing them in the bin and, and taking off the brakes and really being that and that i think is emotionally so powerfully healing for others as well so let's drill into it in a bit more detail. So we're firstly going to ask the tarot for a bit more detail about the healing for you. Then we're going to ask about the healing for others. And then we're going to see how it connects to your life path. So the healing for you, I'll do. Seven of Cups reversed. Judgment. Justice. Page of Wands. King of Swords. Okay. I definitely think you've come to the right reading. You have had a kind of a, a set of rules or a set of what you're supposed to be or how you're supposed to look or whatever it might be put on you. There were the right ways of doing things and a lot of judgment, possibly from a divine masculine type of figure or, you know, a paternal type of figure. Otherwise, you know, sort of like almost a, a manipulative sort of, you know, educational energy or something like that. There's something where... All of this is about you starting to understand that that this was a system that was put on you and a set of ideas and it wasn't right. It stopped the passion and it's like you've got wise to it. You've got wise to some gaslighting or something like that. You've got wise to what is your true beauty and you've got the calling, the calling of the wild as well. So it's not just that you've dealt with judgment that was not right, that was somehow manipulative. You're, you're the call to what would be right and what is balanced and what is real. So 
I think for most of you, you're, you've been in an environment or around people or something like that that have not accepted who you truly are, but you, you don't care anymore, part two. And it's wonderful. You've got wise to it. You know that they don't have all the answers. Your own calling has the answers. Your own passion has the answers. Your own beauty has the answers. So your healing is in liberating yourself from the judgments of others. And I think that will show other people, and that's how you'll help heal others. But let's get a little bit more information about the healing that you offer to others as a result of this. Page of Swords, Four of Swords, High Priestess, Ace of Pentacles reversed, Three of Wands reversed. Okay. So... Sorry, they're a bit skew with. Firstly, you give people a voice that have been silenced. Just in you doing it, you give a voice to people, whether it's just that they tell you or whether they feel they can talk up and 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 make their place more their home, it may you know differ from person to person, but you give people a voice who are silenced. You're also getting them back in touch with their true nature. Rather than the intellectual construct over it, it's the true nature, the mystery, and so forth. I think that people, as a result of being around you, and this is where water comes in, if they've had the wrong connections around them, they're going to dissolve them. It's literally like here, I feel like the Ace of Pentacles is like an aspirin and it's put into water and it dissolves. It's like... There's something in your liberation and your authenticity around this and your, your sense of your own beauty that makes them realize if something is not, if they have connections around them and influences around them that are not on line with them, it is better to dissolve that. It's not, it's, it's a false benefit to them because they get more in touch with who they are and they have the voice to do it. They have the voice to do it. Okay, so let's have a look and see how this relates to your life path. Lovers, Five of Swords reversed, King of Cups, Six of Wands, Queen of Pentacles. Wow, okay. Certainly, if there's anything in this that connects to your career or something, it's very, very good. But I do think for most of you, this, this move to the wild and the beautiful and releasing fear and also helping others do that, and it's sort of like the generosity of spirit you have, it's bringing in or consolidating a very good relationship, very good love relationship. If you're in one already, it just really, it really kind of connects it even stronger, even if it's strong already, but otherwise it brings it in. It's like it takes away and it gives you a courage, like it gives you a courage to to embrace that. For some of you, this may be exactly what it is. It may be that you love someone who other people don't approve of, that they don't think this is, you know, the right sort of person for you or something. And this is, you're not going to give up because the, the emotion is authentic if that's the case. And you're going to win. You're going to win and you're going to get something to last. So it's either a love that lasts or it's you connecting in relationship, not giving up on the relationships that matter, the things that are the true tribe for you, your true emotional authenticity. This is a step towards victory for you. Victory and something that will last, something that is worth it. Like I suppose it makes sense, you know, if the caterpillar becomes a butterfly, the butterfly is the apotheosis, it is, it is the, the thing. Once you achieve this, once you really connect with that and you release the fears, you become victorious in whatever it is that this is. But for some of you, it's a significant relationship that comes in that's very positive and one that's not going to give up, even if other people don't get it. It's, it's, it's going to, to be really key. So that's really lovely. I kind of think like you really deserve it, so I like seeing that. I'm so happy to see that for you. So let's get you some mystical supports for it. Firstly, from the White Owl Mystics, this could be sort of energies. It could be astrology. It could be entities. Just some other things that help you in your healing journey, pile two. We have Sagittarius, liberation, freedom, passion, travel, movement, philosophy. Yeah, your philosophy, not the philosophy of other people. And... And that's expansion too. Sagittarius rules over the ninth house. The expansion of, of your life and your horizons. And seed of life. Okay, so getting to the real core of who you are. This is saying getting back into the ancient mysteries, into the wild primal self. For some of you, 
it may bring in not only a significant relationship, but maybe starting a family, children, all of that kind of thing. If that's something that you want, home there, giving a home to others, creating a home with others through this beautiful emotional energy could be coming. For some of you, it may be creativity, bringing something new into being that is beautiful and resonant and that people really feel at home connecting to. So they're really positive energies for you. Let's get some divine animal support. So one for your healing and one for how you will help others. So for your healing, gorilla, peace. Yeah, giving you the peace, the strength, the strength to do this so that you don't have the fear, so you can be wild, you know, so that you can follow the wolf energy there, but you can also feel at peace with doing it. This doesn't have to be a battle. You just have to be yourself. And the energy of healing is the beautiful emotional cleansing and emotional support and, and homecoming for people. The divine animal for you is sea turtle. Yeah, again, in the water, stability. Yeah, you're going to bring people to their home and to their stability and to, and to their emotional stability in some way. I do think for many of you, it's a significant relationship, very possibly sort of marriage or moving in together, having children, all of that kind of thing. There's something like that for quite a few people who've come to this reading. It doesn't have to be, but I think it is is a big part of it for quite a few of you. So let's see a little bit more about the direction with the Lantern Oracle. Distorted desire, conscious desire rarely satisfies the unconscious need driving it. So I think that this is about getting in touch with the true you rather than what other people have sort of said to do. I just think this is this is saying that you've been told, whether it's in love or in how you express yourself or in whatever it might be that you are getting in touch with, that that wasn't the way you were supposed to be. But that's distorted. you know. So you have to get to the true wild because the unconscious drives around distorted stuff is, is probably from people who've been trying to influence you. So I think it's a freedom from that. You've been following things that weren't right for you because other people told you they were right for you. But this transformation and this releasing of fear and getting back to who you are, is it's inevitable. It's rising in you. So let's have a look at some of the ingredients around it, around the sort of alchemical transformation. So again, for you, your healing, and then for the healing of others. So for you, we have passion. Yeah, passion is your passion, not everybody else's idea about what passion should be, your, your passion. And for your healing of others, strength, yeah, bringing strength to them. Now, what we will look at is whether or not these are, these are things that you have to sort of drink in and, and mainly make your own, share, or that you need to spill so that you can really understand what is you and what isn't you. And over here, for other people, what do they need to drink in? What do they need to share? And what potentially do they need to let go of to truly feel at home? So this goes by the roll of the dice. So we'll see what we get firstly for passion. Spill, okay. So this is telling me, that this is picking up this energy. Part of you getting in touch with the real you is to, to spill the whole passion almost on the floor and then see what is really resonant and what is really true to you. There is something, there is some sort of philosophy or manipulation or ideas or, you know, group think or something like that that's got in the way of your true passion. You almost need to spill it all out and then work out what it is that you want to move forward with and then do that without fear. Here for the healing for others... We have drink. Okay, so yes, the the others need to drink in the strength. The strength that what you are doing and showing gives them. Your example gives them strength and they are just meant to drink it in and to understand how strong they are and how that actually grows for them. So this is, I say, your example is setting this beautiful, you know, positive tidal wave of emotion and finding home and finding strength in being at home. So that's lovely. Okay. So to finish off a couple of things, we'll have some stars to guide you, stars on numerology, and then we'll see the outcome on a spiritual level. So stars to guide you, part two. Black moon Lilith. Wow, okay. So this, I think this is picking up this distorted thing. Like I think if you've come to the right reading, you'll know what this is about. There's, there's some sort of distorted almost vampiric energy around this that you do need to spill and let go of. 
it may have it may have felt like passion for some of you it might have been a relationship that was quite toxic felt like passion seemed like the person you were meant to be with maybe even like a kind of false twin flame or something i don't know but like certainly something like that or or it was very enticing to be in a group but the group is not was not what it appeared to be so there is a real sense of understanding that of understanding what are the right passions to have and what you need to let go of and not to be afraid of your own passion either. You know, Black Moon Lilith can work positively for us as well, once we're authentic about it. Mercury, the need to communicate, the need to understand it, the need to see the manipulation when it occurs and become more clear and authentic in your communication. And two, yeah, like for many of you, this brings in a relationship or just connection with others. It's you being your authentic, wild self, but it somehow brings in others. And for some, it creates a family, creates a home, all of that sort of thing. Or if you're in one, it really kind of reestablishes it. If there have been external forces that have been drawing you or others into other directions, it's it kind of reestablishes that connection. Okay, let's just see a couple of cards for the spiritual energy outcomes of this healing for you, Paul, too, to close out the reading. We have... Sacral energy, creative charge. Yeah, this is yeah, this is what is sacral to you, what is creative to you. And again, a lot of kind of like sort of sexual energy, love energy, wild energy in that way. See it as creative. See the volcano as being something creative and wonderful. And Cosmic rebellion. Oh, I love it. Look at these birds flying. That you do. You need to rebel against something that hasn't been right to be true to who you are. And you are going to you're going to draw a, an emotional army with you. A whole bunch of people who can now find their home. Like it almost feels like Moses taking taking his people out into the wilderness. It's like it's it's that kind of sense of liberating, liberating yourself and others so that you can both be true and find your home. So it's lovely energy, as I said right from the beginning. I I wish you every success pile two because i think what you're going to do is is very powerful and very wonderful not just for you but for other people so i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear otherwise i hope to see you in future readings welcome pile three to your reading so you came to the reading with self-knowledge as the core part of your healing at this point in time then we have here personal power as part of your healing with recognized divine timing and bear totem and wild with the how you help others i have to say i think there's actually quite a specific specific message here and it'll come out either very literally or in some version of this so, so when i talk this through i think you'll know whether or not this is the right reading for you i think this is the group that are coming into their own spiritual power I think for many of you, there is something very wild, ancient about this, something very shamanic. I think that people who are natural shaman energies would come to this sort of reading. Uh, and though it may well be that some are beyond this reading, this may be the, the awakening of the shaman within or the healer within, or it could be going to a new level, having sort of really started to understand yourself through going through the journey yourself. But it has that very strong feeling the self-knowledge dive into your depths where your truth resides this is very shamanic it's going to the depths it's getting to the soul it's understanding who you are that sense of like with the the the, the ouroboros here is sort of like in an infinity symbol sort of swallowing its own tail this sort of sense of like all the karmic cycles all the past the understanding at a very very deep level so you may have been doing shamanic work or past life regressions or some form of very structured meditation or something like that. But there is there is a real new step, the next step coming in, you know, and, and I think for some of you, it's finding the vocation and doing this. And for others, you know, it may be that you're already there and it's the next level, but it's very much connected to this because you are coming more and more into your personal power. It says, I encourage you to be the master of your destiny. This does suggest that maybe the thing that has triggered you on this path is where you have felt other people have have you know kind of controlled you or told you what to do or circumstances around you you haven't understood them like why i put all this effort into something and then it doesn't work out at other times i hardly do anything and something happens what's going on and this is saying that part of this understanding that you're going to get by going to this level of self-knowledge and understanding of your karmic cycles and your patterns and maybe your astrology chart whatever it might be that gives you this information 
is going to make you understand that you aren't hostage to other people's views or even to destiny. There is divine timing. And the more you come into your personal power and understand yourself, the more you align with that. And then things that seem difficult will become easeful. Things that were easeful always will make sense as to why they were. Things will make sense, Pile 3. But it's through a healing journey of getting within the depths to really understand your part in creating something. I mean, there definitely is divine timing. There's all those things as well too, but there's something in your history, your nature and your power, which when you understand it, things are going to make more sense. Then the interesting thing is how you heal others is take them on the same journey. With the bear totem here, retire into the den to find answers. This is saying, you, you will be saying to others, you cannot get to this without going within first. And to be, a, to be wild, to do it on this shamanic sort of level, this always feels very, very strongly shamanic. I mean, I guess this deck does in general in a way, but really here with wild here, it's getting people back to that, to the core. It's like there's no, what this is, 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 is you understanding who you are, your patterns, your personality, your energy, your power, and how that connects and co-creates with the divine. Really, really powerful thing. It's like you then say to those that you heal, it's like there's no strategy that you can do here. There's no, and like, believe me, I can, I can think of people who I know quite well who, if they actually listen to this reading, will be chuckling to hear me saying this because I live a lot in my head. But this energy, what you help people heal with is knowing that sometimes it's not going to be in the head and it's not going to be in some mathematical equation and it's not going to be in some strategy. It's in the wild, it's in the core. And you will show other people through your, your capacity to create, to manifest whatever it is to heal and connect in with the cycles of time, that there is, there is a way to do it, but people have to do a similar journey, that it's not there. There's no kind of course you can go off and do, you know, five sort of like modules in online and then you're suddenly there. This is, this is a journey within. Very powerful. So let's have a look. With tarot. So firstly, a little bit about the healing that's available to you and you're really starting to understand how far you've come, then what healing you offer to others and then how it fits in with your life path. So firstly, a little bit more about this healing that is coming to you, Pile 3. King of Wands, Ten of Pentacles reversed, Four of Swords reversed, Five of Swords, Seven of Swords reversed. Like this is so funny. As I say, I don't know. I can think of at least one person who, if they happen to watch this, is just going to laugh their head off that I'm saying this. But anyway, I'm going to say what the, the cards say. This is this is saying that you know it's in within the core of your own creativity, your own power, and your own maturity in that level that everything lies. Everything else that you thought you know kind of had to be, and every you know everything that that was sort of like hidden away you know it looks seemed like the secrets of the the you know the divine or the secrets of of you know like the system or whatever it is none of that none of that is is going to work this is what's going to work this is this is realizing and coming out of almost a trance about the way that we're told to see battles and and what we're supposed to believe about things it's getting real at a really deep level even about how we trick ourselves and we and we manage to to convince ourselves that you know we're right you know and that like it's just a strategy and we just look at the analytics a bit more and it's all going to work out or whatever it might be this is this is this is you really coming into manifesting this and letting that stuff go the tyranny of that kind of thing the tyranny of the mind over the soul go and i don't think i think most people who come here you're quite well advanced on this i don't think i think you're really you're really kind of there. This is why you're going to help other people to show them that this is a pathway that does work. So let's see what healing, therefore, that you offer to other people. Nine of Wands reversed. The Emperor. Page of Cups reversed. Four of Wands. The Hermit. Okay. Well, certainly by bringing them within themselves. Like there is no other way. I sort of feel like in Dante's Inferno, when when Dante is in, or when the main character is in the ninth circle of hell, there is a, a statement that the only way out is through, which is like through the hell mouth is the way to come out of hell. And I'm not saying that the people here are in hell, but I think this is saying there is, there's sometimes there is only one pathway and this pathway is within. It is not, 
in books. It is not in mathematics. It's not even in like experimentation in a laboratory. It is going within. And you are going to show people that and how they can actually connect with themselves and others better from having done that and heal emotional things, heal their relationships, heal all that sort of thing and know how to deal with power, to have their own power so that they aren't subservient to power. So it's like you have a recipe, a recipe that comes from what you've done that you are going to show other people. And I feel like, you know, you've got to be quite stern about it in a way, but stern around this is the only pathway in, then they will be able to find it through their own wildness. You know, it's not like you're giving them a set of instructions. You're just saying this is what you have to do. And then beyond that, it is your journey and you will find it because it's their authentic power they have to find, not your authentic power or not, as I say, some criteria on a checklist. So let's see how this connects in with your your life path, how this healing energy Next in with your life path, pile three. Three of cups. Three of wands. Six of wands reversed. Ace of swords reversed. The tower reversed. Okay, all right. You really are, either right now or as a process of going through this, you really are going to be showing people this as something that you've learnt because I think you tried to do things incrementally and by the mind as well and that hasn't worked. It hasn't given you the recognition and the power that you deserve. This is you reconnecting to your to your to the right people, to the right direction, all of that sort of thing. You got off course for the same reason that you can see other people have got off course, pile three, but you know you're ready now. That's why you're ready to heal and move into this and connect in with, with divine timing and you can show other people because you did it as well. Like for some of you, a good example of this is that you've been part of the rat race, you know, and you've been going after the next promotion and the next this and the next that and you always felt not fully recognised, not fully to the power that you should have and you're right. But the reason is that you've tried to you know, fit in with, you know, these are the rules and this is the game and this is the strategy and, but you've been doing work spiritually and you've gone more within and you've accessed something and so you're getting back on the right path. That helps you escape this. It's not. This is not a compromising journey, Pile 3. There is nothing compromising about this. Sometimes compromise step by step is really good energy, but this is not working. When you're talking about real, true personal power and moving forward and aligning with your goals and what you can show other people when they go within, it's not, it's not a pathway of compromise at all at all <laughs> can't be bargained out can't be anything so i think but you know that and this you've you've come to that realization you've come to see that you've known you have to be true to your vision you have to be true to your heart that will bring the right people in and so forth it's the only way you cannot bargain very interesting energy so let's see some spiritual supports for you firstly from the white owl mystic deck this could be entities it could be astrological energies it could be uh could be any number of things you'll see depending upon what comes out so a couple of of energies to help you firstly mars yeah it's on uncompromising it's action it's fire it's power this is coming face to face with your uncompromising true power pile three and how you might have tried to bargain around it before, but you're not going to anymore. And as such, you're going to show other people how to do this. Okay. And another energy. Fire. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Creative fire, power, fire. Burning out everything that didn't, didn't work, that wasn't true. Wow. There is a lot of energy in this. But as I say, I think it's like it's a realisation you've done. You're uncompromising about it. I really like the energy, actually. It feels just really, really strong. Let's see some divine animal energy. So firstly, for your healing and also for the healing that you bring to others. For your healing, meerkat, responsibility. You are taking on more responsibility as a result of this. You're taking action. You're taking personal responsibility. This is your motif. This is... This is 
really why it's so powerful. It's because you are taking what is yours and you are uncompromising about it. And you're just like the meerkat, getting a completely different vision by doing that. And in terms of healing others, red fox strategy. Ah, now this is interesting. I think this is actually almost a little bit of an in-joke by spirit because I think what it's saying is the strategy that you were using, the strategy that they try to use, not going to work. The only strategy is the strategy of fire, the strategy of burning it all out and going within and finding the true self. Strategy on its own without, without the true power is nothing. But strategy connected to the true fire of the true self that is only found within, not with bargaining with the universe, but found within. That's the true strategy, but it's not a strategy in the way that, that you or others tend to think about it. It's not a thinking thing. It's, a, it's an experiential thing. Okay, so let's also see a little bit about the direction around this with the Lantern Oracle, around your healing and the healing that you bring to others. Confusion. Growth hurts, heals, and harnesses a way through the uncertainty. Yeah, I think you, you, you've you gone through this, and you know that's the only way. So I'm saying it's just like Dante's Inferno. The only way out is through. You know that, and you can help other people go through that as well too. There is no road map that fits everybody in every situation. There is only your own road map. It's very uncompromising, but I like it. I like the energy. It's really, really powerful. So let's get you a couple of pieces, ingredients in the recipe of this. So for your energy and also for the healing of others. So for yours. Memory. Okay, oh, that makes sense. A lot of the kind of shamanic journeying or any kind of internal thing that's connecting to your karma and everything, the more that you actually access your memory, the more you, the spark of the flame comes. Okay, and then for the healing of others, enhance. Yeah, this will enhance them. Now, with this particular oracle, you roll a dice and it tells you whether or not this is something that you fully need to drink in and absorb, whether it's something you share with others or whether it's something that you almost spill out in the laboratory and just sort of see what, what can remain and what is worth remaining. So we'll look at that for each of these. So for you around memory, spill, okay. There are things in your memory, if you spilt it all out, if you looked at it, there are things that are going to light the, the way to the new world for you. There are also things that are best left behind. And it's probably all the artifice or whatever that you're kind of burning out and clearing out by doing this. It also is saying with responsibility here to spill and let go of responsibility that is not yours. Take on responsibility that is yours, spill and let go any that is not. So similarly here for the help that you're going to healing you're going to give to others and enhancing them in some way drink they need to drink it all in they need to, if they if they drink in what you do and they do it without fear and they move within and they open that wild energy up and find it in themselves it will enhance them and it's it's each and it's interesting that it's it's drink rather than share because i think the point about this is that every journey is individual your journey you can show them the process that has to go through, but it's their journey. The problem with all the strategy and stuff that one tends to think about is it's kind of like, well, here's the roadmap and just do these 10 steps and you'll be fine. It's not that. Every journey is individual. But if they drink in the process, they enhance themselves. They don't, sh they shouldn't share it. It's any more than you can really share your power. You can only hold up the light or hold up the lantern. They've got to do it. You, you can't do it for them. Okay, so let's get some stars to guide you, stars or numerology to guide you on the way. Taurus. Need to be a bit stubborn with this. Need to be a bit fixed. This is not, this is not an easy journey. It isn't done overnight. It also brings in the right sort of world, the good life, all of those sort of things. It connects you to divine timing, so you can create that. Seventh house. For, for you or for the people that you're healing, it might have to do with relationships. It, it, by empowering yourself and them empowering themselves, relationships become more authentic. And... 
I see. Oh, of course. The Imam Kuala, I, I see. That is the the fourth house cusp. It is who you are at the core. It's who you are at home. So this is all about getting to the truth, the real core, the real core right from the beginning. And that for you and for others, becoming really true to, to yourselves. So let's just have a look at the spiritual outcome with two last cards to close out the reading. Firstly, we have, oh, this came out for another, so you might have connected with another as well. Sacral energy, creative charge. Yeah, there is something very sacral, almost sexual, wild about this, about getting to the core of who you are and, and owning that fire. And throat energy, energetic expression. This is something you need to speak. This is something you're going to need to say. You can't tell them what to come out of this, but you can tell them why this process works. And maybe it's saying that also this is something that you're meant to sort of talk about more generally. Share that, that knowledge, share all of that sort of thing with people so that they can also get in touch with it. There's something here you're meant to speak, Pile 3. So I hope you enjoyed the reading. It's really powerful. You're very powerful people, but like it's such a such a revelation, this sort of energy. I really, really like it. I hope that you liked it too. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. But beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings.